Welcome back to part five of our introduction to C++. In this part, we're going to learn about pointers. So I've already created the part five folder and I have a new file in here called pointers examples. And in it, I have my main and I'm including IO stream and we're using namespace standard. So let's first learn what a pointer is. A pointer is a variable whose value is the address of another variable in memory. So pointers are defined very much like how we define variables. They have a type. So the, in the case, the type is what they point to. So you could point to an integer or you point to a double, or if we, when we learn from further on and make our own classes, we can point to a custom class. Then they have a defined name and the name is preceded by an asterisk. So for example, if I made a pointer that I wanted to point to an integer, I say int asterisk p, and that's how I declare the pointer. To assign a variable's address to a pointer, we use an ampersand, which means the address of an operator, and that's placed before the variable. So we could do p here equals the address of i, and i is an integer. So asterisk p refers to the location stored in p, which is the address of i. So let's visualize this. So here I have a working example drawn out. So we are declaring an int i, j, and then a pointer p and a pointer q. And they all point, these two point to an integer. So we, if we set it up, we can assume that this is kind of our memory blocks. So i, j, p, and q live here. And i is at the address 1080, j is at 1084, p is at 1088, and q is at 1092. So we say p equals the address of i. What happens is p's value gets updated to the address 1080, because that's where i's address is. If we say the pointer p equals 10, we're saying that where p points to, that value now becomes 10. So what occurs is i becomes 10. If we say q equals the address of j, then we're saying q is now points to the address 1084. And then if we update uh, q's value to 5, we're updating j to Five. So this is visually what is occurring when we're playing around with pointers. So let's look back at our code. Let's first declare two integers and a pointer. So we're going to do this as integers. So I'm going to say int. We have our first value, comma, our second value comma, and then a pointer, the asterisk number pointer. So this is declaring our integers and our pointer. If we want to look at this first, let's see what memory address does our number pointer point to. So we'll say C out the number pointer points to the memory address. And we can just write in number pointer in line. So right now it doesn't have anything that it's pointing to. So let's we'll see what its default value gets set up as. And then we will set our pointer to look at the address of our first value. So we can say number pointer equals the address of that was ampersand first value. So now it's going to point to the, the memory address of the first value. So if we grab this, we can put this here. I'm going to put some line breaks so we can follow this through. Let's also update our first value to be 10 using our number pointer. So we can do asterisk number pointer equals 10. So now first value should become 10. Let's do the same now with our second value. So number pointer 
equals the address of our second value. Let's say where it points to. Just realized address was spelled wrong, so we'll fix that. And let's update our number pointer. In this case, let's make it 20. Take this and 20. So let's let outprint what our first value and our second value is. Our first value should be 10 or our second value should be 20. So C out. First value is value and second value is second value and line. So let's run this and uh, see what we get as our outprints. I'm going to go to my terminal, run my build task. Then I'm going to open up my terminal and run pointer samples. So I'm going to bring this up. Initially, our number points to a spot in memory. Um, then we update our number pointer to point to the first value's memory address, which is at 61FF08 for me. And then we have it update to point to the second value. But in between that, we are setting our first value to 10 and our second value to 20. And we can see here, first value is 10, second value is 20. So we can use pointers and pass them with methods. So let's say that we have an integer x. So I'm going to make a new int x. I'm going to default it to be 3. What I want to do is I want to change the value of x. So I'm going to make a function called set value to 5. So it's going to be called set value to 5. We'll pass in x. So the idea is I'm going to change x to become 5. So let's make this method. So void set value to five. And for right now, let's write int x. And we want to change x to be five. So x equals five. This changes x to be five inside this method, but x will not change its value here. So if we do c out, The value of x is x so let's run this code and you'll see that our value of x is going to be 3 because it actually didn't change we say that the value of x is 3 so how do we make it change we can modify um, the value of x two different ways. We can set a pointer value, right? that means that we pass in a pointer, or we can pass in a reference. So let's first learn by setting the pointer value to five. So I'm gonna make a new method here, call it void set pointer value to five. And we're gonna take in an int, Point to x. But this is saying I'm expecting the pointer x. And now we can say that the value of that pointer is 5. So this will set the value that x points to to 5. So how do we pass that pointer value? How do we pass that along? So let's call this method. So we need to pass the address along. So we can say set pointer value to five. And what we want to pass is the address of X. So that would be right ampersand. So the address of X. And now our value will change to five. So let's run it. Now our value has updated to five. Now I said there was two ways to do this. We can also 
pass over our variable and then get the reference, the address reference that way. So we're going to make a function called void set value to five with reference. And this will take int ampersand x. So when we get x passed in, we will get the address of x. And then we can say x equals 5. So let's do this. Let's uh, make another variable. We'll make y. So int y equals, we'll say 2. Set value to 5 with reference. We're going to pass in y. And y should be updated to 5. I'm going to copy this and say the value of y is, and let's see, y is 5. So now you know how to work with pointers with methods. So here we've been working with declaring a pointer and then we've been setting the value of the pointer to another item. You can also dynamically allocate memory. So when you dynamically allocate memory in C++, you use the new keyword. So I can make a new pointer like int p, and then I want to dynamically allocate a value. So I can say equals new int that has the value of three. So this is now uh, p points to a spot in memory. We don't know what the variable is, but that, but that is now also holding the value three. When you dynamically allocate memory, you need to deallocate memory when you are done with it. So that is the keyword delete p. And then your pointer should be updated to either a known address or null. So p equals null. All caps null. If you work in Java, you'll get a little confused, but that's okay. So what this is doing is we are declaring a pointer p and then using the new operator we are getting returned the pointer to where the value of three is being stored when we delete p we are deleting that area that p was pointing to and deallocating that memory and then we are setting up p to be a null a, a, either a known address or null. So the problem is, is that P is still pointing to where three was, but now that is, doesn't exist anymore because it's been deleted. It is important to uh, deallocate memory because memory links become a serious problem when the program uses more and more memory without releasing and it can cause abnormal termination. So it's very important that once you're done with your memory, you release it. If you don't release it, you end up getting Sims 3 where everything keeps running and then the program crashes because they never turned off the TVs. So now you've learned about pointers in C++. You've learned how to also work with pointers in methods. So congratulations, you have moved one step further in your C++ knowledge.